We're on? Okay. All right, so we're on the record um, in 18 CR 30 and really dealing with a um, non-substantive uh, matter, I suppose. Uh, have uh, appear Can we have appearances for the record, please? Yes. Mr. Griffiths? Uh, Tom Griffiths for uh, the juvenile. Okay, and Mr. Blankenship. Mark Blankenship, Commonwealth Attorney. Okay, um, and what instigated this restraining order that was entered this morning, uh, today is the 16th of February, was inadvertent discovery of activities apparently of the Commonwealth Attorney uh, regarding information related to this case. So, Mr. Blankenship, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. Yes, sir. Um, this I'd be glad to, to do this under oath if you would prefer. Okay, that's that's voluntary. Um, All right, go ahead. Okay, raise your right hand. You swear the information you're about to provide is the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Okay, lower your hand. All right, sir, so, uh, shortly after this uh, incident occurred, did uh, I have a conversation with all of the attorneys involved, reminding them that they should uh, review their ethical obligations regarding dissemination of information on these types of matters, and you were part of that? Can you give me a time frame? It was the day of the shooting. You were in my oh, office oh, yes. when Bethany came yes, in you, and asked. Yes, I've, I've heard that from you on numerous occasions. Okay, so we've discussed that numerous occasions since then, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and when was the last time you reviewed those rules, sir? You mean red civil rules? The red. It, well, the rules of professional conduct that govern your activities. I couldn't say, Your Honor. Okay, I so you, I couldn't tell you the last time. I, we do it every year at the Kentucky Prosecutors Conference. I'm, I am uh, uh, generally respond. Uh, what I believe the Commonwealth Attorney's uh, role to be in, in uh, as a public official is any statement made to the uh, media is to not enhance the Commonwealth's case in any way uh, against the defendant. Mm -hmm. To not say anything that might uh, prohibit the defendant from getting a fair trial in the county where he's charged. Mm -hmm. um, and But I have historically answered procedural questions from the press in, in hopes of, of helping the public understand how our court system works. Uh, and yesterday in particular, uh, I was asked about, uh, I've looked at your finding of fact number one, which is not factually correct. I never advised anyone of the media that the hearing was postponed. Uh, I gave a general statement of, uh, of what I have learned serving uh, in this, un under, your, uh, under your honor, and that a similar case uh, involving murder in Callaway County uh, had an issue where mental competence was, was challenged uh, before arraignment. And I, uh, I saw Your Honor's work in that, thought it was appropriate, and even though that we had probably, this, this circuit had probably not been doing that for quite some time. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think that was a proper due process uh, ruling on your part. So that's all that I shared. I wasn't talking about this particular case. I just said if that issue comes up, and when I said that statement, I had no knowledge that the defense was even going to challenge. I just said if it comes up, that, that may play in the procedures of this case. And I don't know how they took it from that statement to mean that I'm, I, I, I was telling anybody that the, the hearing, I, I, I you mean, know, 39 years of law practice, I know only judges can postpone a hearing that, that's, that's been set up. Now, there's no way I would have made that statement. It wouldn't even come, come into my mind. And uh, but somehow they interpreted my statement from about what happened in Callaway. Uh, I, you know, it's just a completely uh, ridiculous interpretation of what I said. And uh, I, got your, I got your email last night. Uh, I have... Uh, I have uh, and by the way, Your Honor, I have, if, if, if you want evidence, I mean, I have on my phone yesterday before all of this exactly what uh, I believe I said. I was asked about 512. I'd be glad to share this with you. 
uh, at 512 yesterday, I received a, a group uh, email uh, that's been established for this case through law enforcement, and, but advising whether or not, so did, here's the question from Jody Cash, did the arraignment get postponed? And I said, no. I advised Bryce that this judge postponed an arraignment in a Callaway murder case last year when mental competence was challenged prior to arraignment. I predicted he would do it again, and there's law to support him. Uh, they have just decided not to cover it. I, that's what all I thought that meant was that you know they, they know it's going to be a closed pr pr procedure. There won't be anything available for the press, and uh, I, I just took it that they saw this as a, as a wasted uh, effort on their part, and we're not going to cover it. I never dreamed they took from that that the hearing was postponed. Yeah. Um. Okay. Did you communicate directly with WPSD? Uh, Bryce Mansfield in the form of a, of a text message or, a, or an email. I told him about the precedent in the Chris Miller case. I even, and of course that's a case that's available to the public. If he wanted to, if he wanted to look at that case, that didn't involve a juvenile. They, they can see the, the, the rationale that I was explaining. So you would contradict any statement by WPSD that they were informed by you that you that the arraignment had been continued and on top of that that the defense was challenging the child's competency? I admit, uh, no, I, I, had, I had no con direct contact. I heard from Bryce Mansfield that he wanted to apologize to me. He caught me at a time when I was very busy and I told him I didn't have time, but he wanted to apologize, and, and I, 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 uh, I did not pursue it any, any further than that. I do admit saying that the defendant had had given notice of um, of, the, of the defense intent to challenge competency. I think that is a procedural notice from the defense. I do not think that harms the defendant's case in any way, nor does it enhance the Commonwealth's case. It's merely a procedural a, a, a event that a defense attorney has uh, has given notice of. So uh, I'm guilty of that. If that's if, if I was not even allowed to say that uh, that he that the defense has elected to do that, uh, then I'm guilty. Well, from day one, it's my understanding that Jason Darnold, Jeff Edwards, KSP, etc., have all been in agreement that any statements that would be released would be released from Jody Cash. Well, I, I never agreed to that, and I advised both Jacob Ford and James Burke in my office to never agree to muzzle the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. We are separate and independent from the Kentucky State Police. And uh, when I realized Jacob had made, if he made such an agreement, I told him that that's, that was not appropriate. We, this office is not mine, it belongs to the people, and the people have a right to hear from their Commonwealth Attorney about procedures. I don't think they need to hear from their attorney about evidence in cases or anything that might where, I, where it appears I'm trying to try this case in the media. Well, I guess what I keep hearing is what you think your ethical obligations are. You've stated you can't remember the last time you've read your, uh, your, Honor, I, your I actual read, I, ethical obligations. So I will read them to you. And SCR 3.130, 3.6, talking about trial publicity, there's a long list of restraints and one of which specifically highlights on prosecutors shall refrain except for statements that are, and this is in adult cases, except for statements that are necessary to inform the public of the nature and extent of the prosecutor's action and that serve a legitimate law enforcement purpose from taking extrajudicial comments, from making extrajudicial, extrajudicial comments that have a substantial likelihood of heightening public condemnation of the accused, and there is a commentary to that that clearly states <clears throat> special rules of confidentiality may validly govern proceedings in juvenile, domestic relations, and mental disability proceedings, perhaps other types of litigation. Rule 3.4c requires compliance with such rules. This matter is absolutely confidential. It does not exist. Court dates. No information can be shared. None of it. Um, 
We deny weeks ago uh, scheduling an interview with the Murray Ledger to discuss not only this case, but a death penalty case um, in uh, Callaway County that it resulted in a front page story discussing both of them. You know, we just have to respectfully disagree how we, uh, how, how we see things and, uh, uh, you know, I'm subject to you and uh, I will accept any uh, punishment. Uh, I mean, I, I, whatever, if you think I have done something inappropriate, I, I apologize. I, I had no intent to do that whatsoever. I, I, basically what you've, what, what you've seen is how I've conducted myself throughout this, uh, throughout the time I've been Commonwealth Attorney. I, I have never. I would agree with that. I, I've always, I'm just being me and I, that, if that's inappropriate, uh, then uh, if you, and I'm, I'm willing to accept this one from you, or I'm willing to accept this one from the Bar Association. Well, Mr. Lady Chip, I have no desire. I didn't want to be here till 3.30 in the morning trying to decide what to do, how to deal with it, all of those things. I just wanted to go forward with the case today, and I agree. Uh, I think this is you that, in general, um, you just kind of react in the moment and just aren't, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude, but I can't come to any other conclusion. You're just not concerned with the, the constraints of the ethics rules and the laws are. And that's contrary to your obligations of being an attorney. I respectfully um, disagree. Uh, I asked you to freshen up on those rules. You did not read them. I, I just, you, no. You're unable no, I, to I, even I tell me it. what your obligations are and this is the most high-profile high case in the United States right now. Um, I respect you as a person, but I, I, I can't call this anything other than unprofessional conduct um, that I think requires that it be reported to the K Kentucky Bar Association. <clears throat> Accept that, and you are under that restraining order, sir. Any violation of that would subject subject you to contempt of court. I understand that, and and um, if further in my defense, I, uh, I you know this is not the first time you and I have broached this subject, and uh, I, I have. Uh, by the way, when I got your uh, email last night, I took that the same way as, as the restraining order. I have not, uh, I continue to be contacted and I've told every one of them that I, I'm under a gag order and I will not, uh, will no longer respond and that only uh, Jody Cash of the state police is allowed, uh, as I understand the court's uh, uh, email from last night, which I took as an order and well, today's restraining that. order. Well, I can assure you this is nothing other than dealing with something I really didn't want to have to deal with. Um, juvenile matters are just different. And that was why I said to all the attorneys involved the day of the shooting, everybody needs to brush up on the, the 600, 610s, 640, and they need to brush up on their ethical rules when it comes to dissemination of information. Um, juvenile cases are just different. He is protected just the same up here um, as he was in district court until he is successfully arraigned. Uh, and we have to act that way. The, the danger is once this information is out there, it can't be unrung. The information about competency, you say, well, how could that harm, harm them? Well, it could go one of two ways. It could benefit the defense or it could benefit the prosecution in trying to select a jury pool. Um, you know, the, you could get somebody that says, oh, well, if he's got a mental health issue, maybe he shouldn't get a severe punishment. Or you could get somebody, well, he's just asserting that he's crazy to try and get out of it. They need to put him to the wall. Uh, there is an impact there. People need to know nothing. No, it just doesn't exist. Uh, Your Honor. Pete, you and I respectfully, I respectfully disagree. I think it would be the same thing if I said that the, I can anticipate that the defendant's going to enter a not guilty plea. That, that, 
I, that have you read the juvenile code, sir? That, that we that even that if I said I anticipate that the defendant will enter a not guilty plea. Have you read the juvenile code? Yes, I've read the juvenile code in my end. You have. Well, it's been what, a long what, time. What, chap don't get many what, what chapters cases. does it start with? Six, what, 16, 600s. 600s, okay. And public offenses are in which section? You're handling, no, you're handling the most high profile case in the country and you ought to be able to tell me right off the bat, public offenses are 610. Once they to get transferred, that statute is 610.015. Uh, once they are transferred, uh, 640 covers those matters. This is a legal matter, not a all the, all the handle it from the cut. has done so far in this case is observed. We, we, and we took it to a grand jury because there was a youthful offender result. Well, you've sure had a lot to say for somebody who's done nothing. Well, I've, I've observed. I, I, you know, I've observed. But you don't get to speak. Well, again, Your Honor, we disrespectfully disagree. And, that's I, I, that's fine, but my order is in place, so I, you do not get to speak. Right, and I, I think I've told you before, enter a gag order if you don't want me to say anything, and, and I will I will honor the gag order. I don't even want you saying you're under a gag order, because that could harm one side or the other. It just needs to be refer all communications to Jody Cash until further in well, the end. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office is separate and independent from the Kentucky State Police. And I, I do not believe that it, it's ever appropriate for a Commonwealth attorney to say the only person that's going to talk about this case so that the public knows what's going on in its own court system is going to be a member of the Kentucky State Police. I, we just see it differently, and if I'm wrong, I'll take whatever medicine I, I, I deserve. Well, if you had complied with the rules and the law, there wouldn't be an issue. Well, again, we respect I don't think I did. I know you didn't comply with the rules and the law. Okay. Uh, that's your, that's your, that's your, that's your well, can, can you point me to a statute or a rule that says I'm wrong? Your Honor, I, I, we don't have to debate this. I, I, you, you, well, you say I'm you disagree, gonna, I, but lawyers have I, I, legal I, I, arguments, not personal opinions, and that's all you're asserting is a personal opinion. I'm saying that, that the defense is challenging competency. Uh, to me, that was a, a releasing a procedural to me, I see that on the same basis that, that the defendant, is, on a procedural basis, is is pleading not guilty, uh, not guilty by reason of insanity. I mean, if, if whatever it is that's the truth, and I relay that to the public, I do not see that as hurting the defendant's case or helping the Commonwealth's case. In an adult right. case, you would be correct. In a juvenile case, you are not. In a juvenile case, the well, front of the code talks all about how the purpose is to basically, hopefully, make it to where that juvenile makes it through the juvenile system, rehabilitated, and in a position where no one ever knows anything happened, no one ever knows that they might have a competency issue, no one ever knows that they might not, uh, you know, have they may or may not have a mental health issue. That's why all of that is absolutely strictly you know, I, confidential. I, I, I just, I think I recently, maybe just a matter of a day or two ago, said how impressed I was with the court's uh, grasp of the law, and I still am. But that I, I, I don't think we're, we're going to see this one eye to eye on the law. But um, well, if uh, you would point me to some law other than your personal opinion, I'd be happy to read it. But I can well, tell you, I mean, you know, there, there's I nothing didn't there. See any reason? Obviously, I didn't. I got served with this about 30 minutes ago, so I didn't prep at all for this. The uh, um, it was my understanding of the law, and here again, this will just show where my mental, uh, uh, my intent was, was that once he passed the, uh, the youthful offender, and once he was indicted, uh, I think there's some law there that we, that at that point, he can be treated uh, I, that we that the, that the gloves come off a little bit at that point in terms of what we can say about the case, and and that all what we can't release are records from uh, from the juvenile court, and which obviously I you know I that requires interpretation. Uh, what what records can we not uh, release? Well, I certainly haven't released any records. I don't even have any. I don't even have the file from juvenile court. Um, so. I, you know, this, 
Plus, Your Honor, on the same arraignment, uh, we had two juveniles arraigned, uh, uh, indicted this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I don't, uh, I, I, you know, one was sealed, was one wasn't. Uh, I don't know what was the difference there. We, we, we prosecuted. Oh, it should have been. We prosecuted juveniles since I've been Commonwealth Attorney. It's rare, but uh, I, I don't remember in any of those other cases us doing what we're doing in this one. And, and it may be that I this informed case the clerk to do exactly what we had done in this one with, okay. that, with that indictment. Okay. If that wasn't All done, right. then that's something okay. I certainly need to take up with the clerk's office. Um, so I, I, I made everyone aware on the front end that this was a special circumstance and everybody needed to mind their P's and Q's. Uh, you told me, yeah, basically I've got it. Uh, yeah, we're good. And now you're telling me you made no efforts whatsoever to study up on the law or the legal rules. I didn't and say it, that, Your Honor. I looked at 610. I've, 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 you brought me statutes to look at. I've looked at those statutes. I'd also like the court to know that uh, in my position, uh, the the research that's been done ever since I've been in that office has been done by my uh, assistants. And so for eight, nine, almost 10 years, uh, I, I've used my staff for that purpose. Any pleadings that we've ever filed in this court or, or in Callaway, have been, uh, I, view, I view them, make sure that, that I think it's, you know, but I don't actually go and, 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 uh, and do the actual research. And uh, I do on my own cases when I'm just curious about, you know, what I've got to prove. But uh, uh, anyway, Your Honor, I'm, uh, I, I will, I will uh, say this and uh, because I think it's important. I think it's important that the Commonwealth Attorney uh, uh, has a good relationship with the circuit judge. And I think that from what I know now, if I continue the way I have practiced this office, that it will jeopardize my position with this court. And also, I, I would rather not, uh, even though, I mean, it, this is not just about me, it, it, but uh, I would rather this office have a have a solid relationship with the with the circuit judge than me be allowed to talk about procedures or evidence or, or matters in cases that I think I have been under the understanding that I could say. I will stop all of that to uh, to make things better between my office and, and this court. Well I'm not asking I appreciate that. Let me first say that first. I, I am not asking you to do anything that the law or ethics rules doesn't require. In a normal adult case, there are rules for what you specifically can or can't do. Um, in a juvenile case, however, um, it is best in every way, form, and fashion just to take a, it doesn't exist until he is successfully arraigned, which is consistent with 610 015 when someone is transferred up and is also consistent with um, several but other statutes. Here's what, you know, I guess best summarizes the, 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 the predicament we find ourselves in is, see, when I hear that, I agree 100%. But yet I can't even sell that to the public, that, that this is a juvenile matter, we cannot talk about it. Um, uh, uh, he has to be successfully arraigned before this matter becomes anything that uh, any anything that can be released about it. I mean, would the court find that offensive to say that exactly? Just saying exactly what the court just told me. Well, I mean, I, I think the answer now is, you know, it's a confidential matter. Can't make any comment. Any public comments that will be made will come through uh, public relations officer uh, Jody Cash. And Jody Cash isn't doing that stuff on his own. I mean, it's my understanding, yourself included, they've been gathering in a room and they decide on what statement they want to make. Jody then runs that up his superiors and they have legal look at it to make sure they're not doing anything wrong. 
and then they send it out. And Joey might be communicating throughout. You know, I mean, I, he's been he's been communicating with Jacob and Jason yeah, throughout this me. entire process. And, and with me, I'm on that same. Okay. Yeah. It, so he's uh, asked questions that we've answered. I find he very easy to work with, and, I, and I think a controlled message uh, of about the uh, necessary information. I mean, the media is the media. We have no obligation to them. Um, I mean, once it becomes to where it can be public, yes, I think they have some First Amendment rights to participate in the process. At this point, they have no right to be in the middle of this process, or they'd be in this room right now. Um, uh, trust me. So, it, it, it you know, I am just dealing with what came to my attention. Uh, I mean, I think it was the day after the shooting or so, I came downstairs and you were sitting in front of WPSD in front of your office talking about this case. And I just don't know well, why you would think that's a prudent idea. I, I don't, I, I, I'm not even allowed to say as a human being how, how that tragedy affects me or the people that are around it. I mean, that, you know, these are human nature things. There's nothing to do with, with the case not, and nothing to do with, with the, uh, the, you know, whether the defendant's guilty or not or whether, uh, I, I don't get it. But anyway, I, 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 will, I, will, I will cease. I mean, I'm under an order now. I will follow it to the best of my ability. Well, here's what the rule says. Prosecutor shall refrain from prosecuting a charge. Prosecutor knows it's not supported by probable cause shall make reasonable efforts to assure the accused has been advised of his rights, et cetera, et cetera, and then it gets to refrain, except for statements that are necessary to inform the public of the nature and extent of the prosecutor's action and that serve a legitimate law enforcement purpose for making extrajudicial statements, which is what those would be, that have a substantial likelihood of heightening public condemnation of the accused and exercise reasonable care to prevent investigators law enforcement personnel, employees, or other persons under the supervision of the prosecutor in a criminal case from making an extrajudicial statement that the prosecutor would be prohibited from making themselves. And it talks about how the things that a prosecutor says has a higher impact on the public and the jury pool. What you say, they don't just hear as just anybody saying it. They hear it as a person of authority who knows something you are swaying jurors with no, every no. word that you say. No. You may not be meaning to. I explain what a preliminary hearing is or what a grand jury does or what an indictment is, that does not enhance the case against the defendant. Uh, no, but what, what we're done out there. If I talk about the strength of the case and that we, we've got him dead to rights, anything <clears throat> like that, that mm -hmm. I'm enhancing my, I'm talking to potential jurors and they're hearing their prosecutor say mm -hmm. we have a strong mm -hmm. case. Well, you just stated that you did, said on TV um, that you were talking about how you would feel essentially if you were in that situation, striking about, up a motion about the case. That is not permitted. They can talk that, about how the that, victims that feel. That notice of incompetency is, uh, is, has been has been filed. That would be an inappropriate statement, even though it's the truth. We didn't right, get that. because yes. it's still a juvenile proceeding. Right. Everything to do... Well, see, that's where, again, that, uh, that's where I, that's an interpretation you're making there. Uh, he has... I, I, I would student. bet Mr. Griffiths would agree that that's, that's, not, that's a okay. solid juvenile code issue. To say that a mental challenge is... Right. You're, right. Ta you're taking Even the after jury. a youthful offender and after a grand jury has indicted. Right. Only once he is successfully arraigned, which, if his competency were challenged, which that has not been done yet, and he comes back not competent, then none of this ever goes public, ever. Yeah. And, and the worst I would have said was that he filed notice of, 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 of challenging competency, and he was actually successful with it. And that ends the case. But you couldn't even I, say that is, if, if it remains confidential. Okay. They, they, the, the image of the juvenile code is very clear that the juvenile, is unless they are successfully prosecuted as an adult, it's supposed to remain as if it never happened. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows what they're accused of. That's nobody knows case. anything about the case. None of us have disclosed any personal information about him. 
you can put, you expose a defense strategy, and now of, of a defense that they were that they're kind of challenge confidence. He was. Right. I, I, I took I'm that. that. I, I'm guilty, I, and whatever punishment goes with that, Tom, I'll take it. Uh, but I have not heard that man's case, and uh, and, and I think you know, uh, uh, lay people understand a lot more than we give them credit for that. Everybody, when this event happens and when it keeps happening all over the country, mental, even our president, mental health comes up. And uh, so nobody would be surprised that they, they've got to challenge and look at his mental confidence. I, I Mark, I see. would just propose to you, you're looking through it for the, through the wrong set of goggles. Right, I'm gonna You've got to look at it I'm through this, this set of goggles. I want, I there want. are things, for example, the reason we don't have an inpatient rehab here yet is just until recently the Supreme Court had rules saying I couldn't go ask for money from anybody for anything. Now we have some new rules that loosen that a little bit. But, in, you know, commonsensically, would anybody get mad if I go out here and ask somebody for $1,000 to open it? No. But it doesn't matter. I can't do it. I see. That, that, that's I the world you. that we operate in, and in, in these juvenile matters. Kentucky appeals courts are very serious about this confidentiality issue. I litigated it uh, for years, uh, as Mr. Griffiths is aware, and he has as well, and they're very serious about it. I understand. So, um, moving forward, we just, nobody needs to know. It doesn't benefit anybody one way or another for somebody to know something. The only thing it does is put information out there that may or may not be accurate or reliable for the media to just cause a bunch of frenzy. That makes it worse for the defendant, his family, for the victims, their families. It makes it worse for everyone involved. So there just there is no balancing here of uh, a, well, especially while this remains juvenile. Uh, some sort of real interest to me uh, in First Amendment speech. There's just nothing to be relayed um, that 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 needs to be relayed or can properly be relayed. The things that I saw Jason do on, originally, like here's how a general juvenile case works through the system. First, the person would be taken into custody generally and then they're arraigned, and then there uh, may be a transfer hearing. If there's a transfer hearing, then it may go to circuit court. General statements that have nothing to do with, with the specific facts I, I of that case, that just about the law. I agree and that, that may have been what you thought you were accomplishing. I can tell you your statements go well beyond that into defense strategy, into uh, harboring emotions for the victims, those sorts of things. Those things are not permitted uh, by the rules that govern your conduct. And I've tried and tried and tried to nicely, hey guys, be sure and look at those rules. Hey guys, this is, this is really serious stuff. And now I've got to sit up here and, and do this. So I don't, I don't like doing this. I, I, don't, I don't like doing it all. So. We'll move forward. I have an obligation to report you. It's nothing personal. Um, and uh, and I've already discussed you. it. I expect I'm, Tom to. Well, and I didn't do, come up with that decision on my own. I've consulted uh, the Judicial Ethics Commission and uh, others about how to handle this, and they don't feel like I have a choice. So um, it is what it is. Um, let's just honor the gag order. Somebody ask you a question. Say, sorry, I just can't comment on this, and um, any information that does get released will be released in an official statement. That's exactly and, what I've done ever since I got your email, okay. which I consider to be an order. Okay. Any questions? Anybody? Judge, I'm going to communicate the, the gag order to the people at the PA who are working with me, like my investigator, people like that, to make sure that it's clear. Um, I wouldn't expect them to ever make a comment. I'm going to extend that out, so sure. just so you know. Um, also, Angela Troutman mm -hmm. from the Paducah office is going to do an entry of appearance on the case, okay. um, and I will personally contact her and let her know as well. Okay. Well, I, knowing Ms. Troutman, I don't. I assume it really wouldn't be a problem anyway. Um, yeah, and, and I'm assuming you don't have an objection to the order being in place. Judge. Uh, so. I have an objection. Um, well, I don't like getting in the middle of people's business at all. 
let, let's please move forward in a way that I don't feel like I have to get in the middle of anybody's business. Absolutely. It's hard enough on everybody uh, uh, as it is. So thank you, gentlemen, for your time. We'll, um, I'm going to take a second, and then we'll get started next door. Thank you. Thank you.